It has been a challenge restoring the color to vintage red velvet for me in the past. I have tried a few things I could buy at the craft store, but I want to share with you the thing that I found that works the best, and that is a die that is made for leather. The biggest problem with this chair are the white fibers showing underneath of the red velvet plush. So that is what I'm going to fix here today. This is a die you can buy at Tandy Leather, and you can also find it online on Amazon and eBay, among other places. This is an oil-based die, and it is a brilliant red. It works great on leather, and I know that it does not rub off the leather because I have made leather purses and used this die. One of the ways to apply this die is with the dauber that comes with the die. If you have a larger area, you might want to consider using a paintbrush. This is a die that leaves whatever it goes on very soft. It actually appears to soften leather, and when you put it on velvet, it makes it very soft and has a very nice feel to it. So here I've got half of the seat done, and you can see how much more brilliant the red is on the half that I have done. I'm not worried about getting the dye too much on the wood because I'm going to be using chalk paint on the wood, but if you are not refinishing your wood, either tape it off or just make sure you have a good wax finish on it. You can see when I turn the chair how well this dye actually covers the white fibers in this velvet. This is an oil-based dye that will dye your hands, so I use the vinyl gloves. The other valuable thing for the vinyl gloves to me is that it is great to rub this dye into the velvet. If you don't have gloves or don't want to use gloves, you can use a soft scrub brush or a hair brush, but the gloves in the hand, I believe, are the best way to get this dye in there. I'm going to spray just a little bit of water in this dye because it helps to distribute it on the velvet. You don't want to get it too wet because you don't want your dye to soak in, but a little bit of water can work very well for just distributing the dye well in the fabric. All right, so it's one o'clock in the morning. Everybody else in the house has gone to bed but us, and we're going to do some work on this chair. All right, I wanted to try another way of putting this dye on while I had this chair out. I just put half dye and half water in this bottle. So I'm going to spray this part right here, even though it's not faded like the other part is, was. Um, it's a slightly different shade of red, so I want to darken this up a bit to go with the bottom. So I want to try spraying it on and see if that works uh, any better just as well. Not at all. We'll find out. I'm going to cover the wood just to keep overspray off of it as I go. This better actually than the first way I did it. It's pretty cool. Alright, since there's half water in this bottle, I'm not gonna wet this fabric down. I'm just gonna spray this and then wipe off the overspray. I'm not going to worry about trying to work it in because uh, there's no white fibers showing here and I just want the color there. So I'm going to make it quick and easy like this. All right. We'll come back when it dries and see what we got. So this looks awesome. It is um, just what I expected. It is very soft and I'm very happy with the results of this. I am going to seal the dye in with acrylic resiline. You can find this in the same place that you find the dye. You can apply the sealer with the dauber. You can put it in a spray bottle. I have used this in a spray and it works very well. Or you could also use the paintbrush and brush it on. Um, all you want to do is make sure that you just cover all the surfaces. This is what is going to seal the dye in 
and seal stains out. It does not have to be a heavy coat. You just want to put enough on there to cover it and it should be damp when you are done, not soaking wet. After you've done a decent size area, you can either use gloves if you have them on to rub this in just like we did the dye. If you don't have gloves, you can use a soft scrub brush or a hairbrush to just work all of that sealer into the fabric. Once all the fabric is sealed, I'm going to wait 48 hours and come back and check the results. So these are the results. The color is great. I'm really happy with this. It is still very soft and everything that I wanted the dye to do, it is done. After your upholstery has dyed for 48 hours, you want to take a cloth and wipe the fabric to make sure there is no excess. There will usually be a little bit, but it's just dye residue. And normally once you do this, all of the dye is up from the fabric. If you want to further protect your fabric and your clothing, although I have never had this dye rub off, you can also put Scotch Guard on it on top of this. And that is just, uh, it's a great way to keep stains out and color in. So that's it. That is the best red velvet dye that I have found. Please be sure to like and subscribe and check back. I put up new videos often. Thank you.